mean nothing but a company's dream A couple hundred million workers, it's all that they see Our hands and the tools, money writing the rules From the sweatshop prisons to the cops and the schools Got the middle class living like it's gonna last Working longer, harder hours for less and less cash Got the media spins, Republican twins Got the war profiteer, great executive grins Got the heroin running through the veins of the poor Got the ghettos locked down, paying blood for the war Got the cities decay, the dealers to pay And the death squads working for the CIA You got a million new jobs inside a thousand new jails Outsourcing the unions, profit tipping the scales Got a brainwashed youth, a trumped up truth Got snipers armed with rifles on the factory roof You got a 30 minute speech full of oohs and ahs Got the cops armed tough out there breaking the laws Got the front row seat to your own defeat You got the tear gas canisters filling the street You got the laws all written for the rich and the white Trick the rest of them fools into the army to fight In a dead end game, each war the same You got a land and a people and a market to claim Got a woman beaten down everywhere that you look In the schools, in the jails, in the courts, in the books Got the TV set, sexism's outlet Got a culture full of men talk the fall for that shit Yeah, and I do too, I'm not blaming you But I'm trying to unlearn what they said was true Yeah, and I need help, I'm not afraid to say it It's a subliminal tool, sometimes it's hard to see it Hello, this is Socialist Links. Um, recently, there has been a lot of uh, attacks uh, by the United States against the uh, against marginalized groups, from transgender people, homosexual people, black people, his Hispanic people, Latinos, uh, Latines in general, um, and many other people in different groups around the United States. They have been attacked by certain policies in the name of "quote unquote" protecting children. Uh, spreading voting rights and uh, stopping uh, communism. And these are different um, policies have usually resulted into the same ideas and the same problems uh, throughout the country. One, more and more people's rights are being trampled and their freedoms are being taken away a actively. Two, the very right for existence for some people are not even recognized anymore. And three, these entire um, policies and a lot of these policies are a way where a, a political party, in fact two political parties, can have more control over the entire political system rather than the people themselves as exactly what this political system is designed to do. That is the reality of the bourgeois state and its functions of a bureaucracy under the ideas of, a de of the bourgeois democracy, a democracy for the own class of society. Not a real democracy of the people, by the people, for the people. Specifically, the mass majority of the people, which, of course, as we know, and and is statistically proven, the working class. Here, I want to be able to talk about uh, what's going on in the United States and how this, how and how I would like to characterize this, and others that have been able to actually help me write this um, and also publish this is a war. A war that the United States has declared against its own marginalized population and the rest of the working class of its own population as well. As well as I'd like to cover some early history of the United States and understand on how we got here and then show on how that early history still affects many uh, people today and how uh, these entire racist policies have even evolved to something that most people still do not understand um, in the United States because of these policies such as the ban of critical race theory um, is basically trying to uh, show that. So. I want to preface this uh, video by saying thank you to uh, the co-authors of this work, uh, which is Feminine Bolshevik, um, also which you can find on Instagram, and Percy Perseus, which you can find uh, on Discord. Um, so I want to thank those people for helping me uh, for helping me write this work and uh, for me to be able to publish it. So without further ado, um, let's get started. 
Ever since 1776 during the American Revolution, American revolutionaries and American citizens have had in common agreement that one's ability to speak is to be free for all. That is to say, to have the freedom of speech uh, and freedom of religion outside of the state or federal body of state influence. Where can, uh, where one can criticize their own politicians and voice their politics not be, to not be persecuted for their speech against the state. But in 1917, Woodrow Wilson would change that forever by passing the Sedition Act and the Espionage Act, where people were not allowed to criticize the federal body of the, the federal body of states in the United States of America. This is mainly to stop criticism from political opponents about Woodrow Wilson's controversial racist laws and imperialist policies. So much so that the Ku Klux Klan, the KKK, was legally reintroduced into the United States of America, and President Wilson's legislation that would convince the Senate of the United States of America to declare war against the Central Powers of Europe in World War I. These specific political opponents weren't just radical Republicans or old social justice Republicans. These political opponents would be much more dangerous than the Mudrackers or Douglasians combined. These opponents ranged from the Wobblies and Unionists to Cynicalists and Bolsheviks. They came uh, from the most downtrodden of American society. Not much has changed since then. From the fear-mongering of Joseph McCarthy in the mid-1950s to the laws being pushed from reactionary organizations such as Mons for Liberty and conservative political parties to ban topics that would even mention the dark history of, American, of America as a country, even go as far to, as, to, as to threaten the livelihoods of teachers for simply uh, asking what is considered to be anti-American in the eyes of these delusional bourgeois lawmakers. The banning of topics such as critical race theory to sim CRT to simple uh, education on sexuality. The humorous, uh, the humorous thing about these laws is the fact that they're merely damage control, as these laws were in response to the amount of people favoring socialism due to the pandemic that swept the nation back in early 2020, as well as the protests and riots that took that took effect after the death of George Floyd, two months after America was in total lockdown. The support leftist thought continues to go as the U.S. masses continue to become disillusioned with the American dream. However, this shows a bigger problem that lies in the current system, that problem being more purposeful neglect and attack marginalized people, an attack, an attack that has existed since the formation of the United States of America. Struggles for the freedom of people in general, even with certain reforms we have got, we have gotten after waves of revolution from the American Revolution of 1968 and even Stonewall Riot of 1969, that allowed civil that allowed the Civil Rights Act and Equality Act to be passed, where homosexuality was decriminalized and Black Americans would be able to have the right to vote and not be surrogated based on color or genealogy records based on race. There is still growing and repressive policies and actions being partaken by the American bureaucratic bourgeois state. Even in the start of the 2020s, we have uh, seen nothing but milquetoast politicians, the fascists, taking power within the United States of America that do very little to respond of the of, to respond of this of this nation uh, of this nation's crisis, to even proposing and passing policies that would harm the freedoms and autonomy of others. Politicians of both parties, of the Democratic Party and Republican Party, are very much guilty of this. From the war on crime from 1965 to Arizona's three-state legislation state bill and Idaho's voting rights bill in, April, in March to April of 2022, Democrats and Republicans have been doing nothing but opposing policies that would discriminate against people based off sex, race, age, and gender in the United States of America. So much for freedom and equality, supposedly, rooted in our country's history, when none of that uh, is being passed at all when looking at the most disgusting and repressive actions of the American theocratic bourgeois state. Even with food stamps, and even with gay marriage, even with the end of, of conversion therapy, and even the legalization of abortion and surgery for gender transition, these still do not address the policies and problems that this, that is the that is actively being done and structured to harm people such as cultural assimilation pol policies and in public schools uh to 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 the public indecency laws that is made to mostly target females people with queer personality and two-spirited individuals but things have gotten even worse since the start of 2020, where politicians from the Republican Party were able to pass anti-transgender, anti-homosexual, and anti-people of color laws in in 
in place in the name of child protection, voting rights, and voting rights. With the Democratic Party doing little to nothing to actually stop these policies, despite the fact that they claim to represent the LGBTQIA plus community and represent black working class Americans. As well, they have the powers to combat against these policies. Instead, they do not act and just try to encourage uh, to and just try to encourage others to vote on the upcoming election of 2024. Despite having a majority in the Senate, they have a sim- and have sympathy from even Republican Supreme Court judges on this issue, they still refuse to help these marginalized people. The only difference between the- these repressive actions is a Republican cop will just beat you with a baton, while a Democrat cop will beat you with a baton, but the cop is wearing a be- Black Lives Matter sticker. This goes into the struggle for women's liberation and transgender liberation as well, because they are also facing a huge struggle at the moment uh, that is against the their very their very freedoms to control their own bodies and exist in the first place, while claiming they are trying to protect children, when in reality, when when in reality when these children are born are granted the freedom and autonomy to live, the same oppressors and abusers of power will do everything they can to destroy the very foundations of their lives to be stable or to exist without violence. How can people claim to want to protect children from death when they are when they are little to no when there is little to no social welfare safety nets for teenage mothers to help their children that result in the death of the born child? As well, these claims about protecting child safety and protecting child lives completely ignores some of the basic embryonic science that, cla- that clarifies a human baby and a fetus. In pregnancy, although the fertilized egg cell is indeed going to develop into a human and a fetus is indeed alive, is not counted as a human life due to the process of meiosis. When the sperm cell and the egg cell meet each other to make a fertilized egg cell, they uh, make up 46 chromosomes. Which that is double the chromosomes of a human being, where our average uh, chromosomes level is 23 chromosomes. Thus, as well, even doubles more at, to add to 92 chromosomes in meta in the meta in meta phase of pregnancy. Thus, the most accurate way uh, one can uh, say there is indeed a human life is that in the fer- uh, that is in the fertilized egg is when the process of meiosis actually reaches telophase 2, which is, at, which is at the very end, and is only completed in the third trimester of pregnancy. These injustices, as well as these false solutions to the issues at hand, are indicative to the real problem of plagues within America. The fact is these issues are continuing to be brought up in form of protests and black, uh, from the black masses to continue to support for socialism are not the fault of the quote-unquote secret SJW, that's SJW sort for social justice warrior, Democrats supporting Marxists that reactionaries and conservatives alike, to, uh, alike so love to fearmonger about the fault of the system. Um... That keeps failing to hear the cries of the working masses. The masses have been oppressed for centuries since Christopher Columbus's colonization of America. These wounds have not been healed, and the people worldwide are looking for a solution to these problems. In order to in order in order to know what the answer is to these problems, we must look at the movements that became revolutionary to in addressing these problems head on. To understand both of these movements that occurred in the past and our ongoing struggles today, we need to understand the totality of these things together so, uh, to show why it is important uh, in the first place. If there hasn't been a past, there is no current event, and then there is no future to look forward to. For all three of ha- for all three of contradictions, despite being time based, thus these contradictions must work themselves out through analysis and argumentation to find the unity of the opposites in these contradictions, to find the truth uh, in this issue. We have already shown the ongoing discrimination of the marginalized population of America, and how the current ruling status quo is not addressing this discrimination. But that is not the only form uh, way to resist discrimination, and has lasted that has lasted for decades repeatedly to the point where people just be, just come to accept what other people tell them to be and how to think rather that rather than the species being themselves able to choose who they who they are and what they desire in the first place as well on how they themselves should think about themselves and things they they themselves care about 
In fact, by people just declaring their own freedoms and declaring their own resolutions and acting on it, that has been more effective to stop discrimination than any bureaucrat in Congress or the executive branch can do, or what any owner of capital in America can do with corporate policy in the workplace. This is shown in many movements that have influenced ideas, politics, uh, politics and physical policies in American politics, just as the revolutions of 1968, where all over the world the working class and the scholarly class raised uh, raised up against the owning class and bureaucracy. This was inspired. Uh, this was inspired to happen to occur in America in 1968, um, in the antebellum South and postbellum South, and even capital of Wa- and even the capital of Washington D.C. In this revolution, 1968, this led to the Civil Rights Act. And the, this led to the Civil Rights Act, Equality Act, and the American bourgeois state had a compromise, uh, had a compromise, but also gave ideas to specific radical revolutionaries like Malcolm X, as I said, like Fred Hampton, Hugh P. Newton, and uh, and uh, and others. Uh, in this time, they and not just moderate uh, political activists like Rosa like Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King. Uh, to question for a new African Republic where black Americans can declare their own nation as where as their own, where they can declare their own freedoms against the white supremacist and racist actions of America. This would even be articulated by by more uh, by more both black and white Marxists uh, around the world, like C. L. R. James, Hale Draper, George Padmore, Julius Jacobson, Angelia Davis, and Clara Fraser. This was a radical time, and due to the lack of a vanguard party, the class of political consciousness for something like a full seizure of power to smash the state machine did not occur. Rather, minor reforms that addressed the clear signs of racist discrimination laws in the antebellum South and postbellum South, but did not address or abolish the more uh, subtle forms of racist discrimination. But it was due to the working class standing united together where they are able to make change and actually do good in America. That actually made change. The same happened in 2020, where although not all moderate pol- policies for Minneapolis for the for the Minneapolis Revolt of 2010 was passed, like defunding the police, allowing more social welfare safety nets, and allowing universal health care, one thing that was passed to end uh, was to end stop and frisk laws in 2020, two months after the Minneapolis Revolt of 2020, and the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone of 2020. All of these, uh, all of these, just merely policies, just addressing the moderate problems and not the root problems of racism, are able to be more influential than any election could do in American politics. However, of course, this did not bring everything to light, but that is, but that is due to the lack of the class and political consciousness able to bring the importance of these revolutions and revolutionary situations, not the revolutions or revolutionary situations themselves. As Simon Bolivar once famously said, quote, when, this is, when the state of society is in chaos, revolution is order. End quote, Simon Bolivar, enemy of all kind. Enemy of all mankind, sorry. As I am recording this and as we are writing this, uh, on June 24th, 2022, the Supreme Court has overturned the right to abortion, completely going against their own Fourth Amendment rights uh, that gives the right to privacy to Americans, which the Supreme Court themselves have also said that includes the rights for people to control their own bodies. But hey... What did you expect? This isn't a democracy, and whoever tells you that the United States is democratic is your enemy. The Supreme Court judges are not elected at all. They are chosen by the president, and the elections that the United States has is only an election for the electors that are chosen to represent the bourgeois states of the United States, where the United States acts as a federation of bourgeois states. These electors are chosen by the state government to represent the popular vote or not. These electors also have to ch- also have the right to choose not to go for the popular vote, which in California, Arizona, Alabama, Florida, and Georgia have elections, and they have done this multiple times, where they basically um, did not go with the actual popular vote, but they just voted on their own volition. No power from the people, uh, no power from the people for the people. No self action to determine politics. No legislation elected by the people. Nothing. Just the bourgeois state electing itself. It's a complete bureaucracy, just like that of China, Iran, and Russia. 
The working class themselves must seize state power and smash the state machine to stop this despotism towards them. And while doing so, they will start the road of emancipating themselves and the rest of the entire world with it. As stated by Frederick Douglass, a radical abolitionist within the United States, quote, Negro men cannot be free nor can be emancipated from the servitude uh, from servitude of human ownership until the Negro themselves, with their Winchesters, revolvers, and dynamite stakes, declare themselves to be free and act on it, with the full hatred of the existing social conditions of the current political events of the United States of America. End quote. Frederick Douglass. The United States cannot remain half slave and half free. In the creation of the United States of America, it was a merchant and peasant revolution against the British landlordry that uh, that levying a huge uh, a huge amount of surplus tax collections against the peasantry, as well as landlords trying to basically basically trying to shut down shops and taverns that merchants had uh, had in order to turn them into peasants to work for the crown of Britain. This was levied at the hardest of the American peasants and merchants because these taxes were levied as a way to pay for the cost of damage in the Seven Years' War. However, to many peasants and merchants, they didn't even ask for the war to take place in the first place. Thus led to, thus lead to, thus led to many British settlers in America wanting independence from Britain. This led to the first American Revolution. In 1773, the American Revolution officially broke out through the Boston Tea Party Revolt, where merchants dressed up as indigenous Americans, uh, that of mostly the uh, Iroquois tribe, and threw out tea off the ships owned by landlords in Britain that those landlords had gathered uh, from the labor of their peasants in Virginia, Georgia, and even Vinland, now known as Newfoundland. What followed was the, uh, then the Declaration of Independence of the American Colonies uh, and declared themselves as the United States of America in 1775 after trying countless times to compromise with the landlordry of Britain and the merchantry and peasantry of America had, and had enough of being taxed uh, and of royal dominance and declared independence. However, revolutionary situations had, uh, that had led to the revolution had been happening in America in 1765 with the Boston Massacre, uh, New York uh, riots against the Stamp Act, etc. Many historians have even, uh, and even some Marxist thinkers try to ignore the actual significance that the American Revolution had in building capitalism in a place worldwide, just as the French Revolution. But I think uh, this downplay of, on the events is very wrong. There was feudalism in America, actually both in the North and the South, from lords in England, where they were able to, ha to be appointed land uh, by the monarchy. This was antagonistic for the merchant classes in America, where they wanted to expand profit, but the feudal system of limiting exchange was halting uh, any way for more access to commodities to sell and uh, more grain to be taxed. Uh, and hopes of and hopes of redistributed. The American Revolution was indeed a bourgeois revolution against feudalism in America, and a fight from the merchantry and peasantry against the nobility and slavers. This revolution, however, did not abolish slavery and oppression as a whole. In fact, it was very profitable for the merchantry to keep slavery established, uh, established a capitalist system with a slave law and remain. Because here's the thing that the Democratic Republicans and the Federalists both realized about capitalism and slavery. Slavery and capitalism can go hand in hand uh, because slaves are the cheapest labor possible to be able to produce commodities and thus can act as workers that are somehow independent and are able to live by themselves as people, while at the same time uh, be able to act as private property themselves to work on private property to for a certain to for a certain amount of labor time into the workday producing commodities that would not get paid for but but that both the surplus value they produce and the price of their layer power both go to the slaver bourgeois this was understood this was understood and even fought against by the left wing of the American Revolution like Daniel Shays and the Shays Rebellion and Whiskey Rebellion, where thousands of peasants in Massachusetts and Pennsylvania rebelled against the generalization of exchange of the commodities as a new method of economics in the United States of America, as well wanted the, to end all markets prior prop, and private property in the United States, which included uh, for the enslaved to be free. Daniel Shays himself urged the enslaved to rebel as well for themselves to emancipate themselves. Many of the merchant revolutionary leaders, especially Alexander Hamilton, 
and John Adams were against this, and George Washington agreed with them, thus leading to George Washington himself leading the standing army of the bourgeois state in America to destroy the rebellions, thus destroying the heart of the American Revolution in the end through the bureaucracy and tyranny of, a di of different kinds against the people of America, destroying the entire point of the American Revolution, when it was the fight against tyranny as a whole. But of course, these rich white merchants that owned black people as slaves were more worried about a tyranny of the majority, as George Washington himself put it, rather than what actual tyranny looks like. Without the tyranny of the majority, you get something worse, tyranny of the minority. The Shays Rebellion, the Whiskey Rebellion, is probably considered the origins of the abolitionist movement in the United States, where many of the enslaved started to able to where started able to read and was reading more into revolutionary theory that uh, that the Shays, the American proto-communists in the American Revolution, led by Daniel Shays, then started advocating for the overall abolition of slavery, which led to influences from other liberal revolutionary thinkers like Thomas Paine, Jean Locke, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Jean-Paul Marat, and Maximilien Robespierre. The physical origins of the abolitionists then came to head uh, through the Louisiana Slave Revolt of 1811, where the enslaved in Louisiana revolted and stormed many plantations, taking them over as outposts of the revolution, then marched on to New Orleans to, to take it over as a capital of the revolution. The Louisiana Slave Revolt of 1811 was a direct influence from the Haitian Revolution and a few of the Haitian revolutionary leaders, like Vincent Auger, Duddy Bookman, and, And, and André Bigault, and Alexandre Beton. The revolt was crushed and everyone uh, was involved uh, in the uprising. In any way, both white and black people were decapitated and their heads stuffed on pikes as a warning for the entire enslaved and peasantry across the country of the United States. This event, plus the Boston and New York riots of 1820, would spark the establishment of the police as a domestic military presence in all cities across the United States in 1821, made to crush proletarian action against the bourgeoisie, protect prior property and capital accumulation, and apprehend runaway slaves to bring them to, back to the slaveholding bourgeoisie. From the abolitionist movement in which people united want, uh, in which people united wanted uh, the removal of slavery uh, and the freedom of African slaves into society to uh, to the American Civil War and eventually the Emancipation Proclamation in which slaves uh, of colored descent would be free to choose uh, and fight to, uh, uh, to live to breathe their own path to breathe their own path. Throughout its history uh, was a history of class struggle. The workers and remaining peasantry activity fought against the oppre oppressive nature of the Confederates um, that wanted to uphold slavery throughout the United States. The fight against slavery and abolitionist movement had its roots back in the 16th century, but it wasn't until the early 1800s that it took off as a revolutionary movement that wished... Uh, that wished for a true removal of slavery and new America, one without op rep oppression. Through the formation of the American Colonization Society in 1816, the movement, the movement managed uh, to fight for the right for African Americans to return to, Afri uh, to return to Africa and and and, li and live their lives freely. In 1820, anti-slavery and radical sentiment became more and more common due to the establishment of the Missouri Compromise. Uh, which made the North, uh, which made the North a slave a slave state. The establishment of the North becoming a uh, of the slave state uh, that made the abol that made the abolitionist movement more radicalized, organized, uh, uh, organized, and by the 1830s more active, uh, as well as taking steps it needed to uh, needed to combat racism. By the by, the time uh, of the 1850s rolled around, tensions between pro and anti-slavery movements became more active as Congress passed the Fugitive Slave Act law, which ordered all escaped African Americans still present in, uh, in the United in the United States to return to their owners. This was made worse seven years later in the United States Supreme Court announced that African American African Americans did not have the right to autonomy and citizenship within the United States. This would cause the outrage within the abolitionist movement. These tensions between the South and North, pro-slavery and anti-slavery, slave-owning capitalists, and the working class, anti-slavery supporters. That would later culminate in the Civil War in 1861. Two years later, in 1863, the abolitionist movement gained victory after Abraham Lincoln announced the establishment of the Emancipation Proclamation, which would finally abolish slavery and give African Americans freedom against any form of oppression against their white slave masters. 
as best stated by a German radical uh, within within Europe at the time, talking about the American Civil War, quote, the strict com- uh, com- uh, confinement of slavery within its old terrain, therefore, was bound, according to the economical law, to lead the gradual enfranchisement of the political uh, sphere to annihilate the hegemony that the slave states exercised through the Senate, and finally, to expose the slaveholding oligarchy within its own states to threatening perils from the poor whites, in accordance with the principle of any further extension of slave territories was to be prohibited by law. The, Republican theref- the Republicans, therefore, attacked the rule of the slaveholders at its root. The Republican election victory was accordingly bound to the lead to the open struggle between North and South. This and this election victory, has already mentioned, was itself conditioned by the split of the Democratic camp. The Kansas struggle had already caused a split between the slaveholders' party and the, Democrat, and the Democrats of the North allied to it. With the presidential elections of 1860, the same strife now broke again in the more general form. The Democrats of the North, with Douglas as their candidate, uh, made the introduction of slavery into territories dependent on the will of the majority of the settle- of of the settlers. The slaveholders' party and, uh, Brecken- and Breckenridge as their candidate maintained the con- that the Constitution of the United States as the Supreme Court had also declared brought slavery legally to its train. And in of itself, slavery was uh, already legal in all territories and required no special naturalization. Whilst, therefore, the Republicans prohibited any extension of slave territories, the Southern Party lay claim to all territories of the Republic as, as legally warranted domain Domains. Uh, what they attempted, uh, by the way of example, to regard to Texas to force slavery on a territory through the central co- through the central government against the will of the settlers themselves. Now they now set up the law for the territories of the Union. Such a con- concession lay beyond the power of of the Democratic leaders uh, and would uh, occasion the desertion of their army to the Republican camp. On the other hand, Douglas's settlers' sovereignty could not satisfy the slaveholders' party. What it wanted into effect to be effected within the ne- within the next forty years under the new president would only be would only be affected by the resources of the central ca- of the central government at Brooke. No further to delay and not escape from the slaveholders that new power had arisen the no- the northwest whose population having almost doubled between eighteen fifty and eighteen sixty was pretty well equal to the white populations of the slave states a power that was not inclined either by tradition tradition, uh, temperament, or mode of life let itself by dragged of compromise to compromise in the manner of the old North East, uh, Eastern states. The Union will still, was still of value to the South only so far uh, as it is handed over federal power to, uh, to it as a means of carrying out the slave policy. If not then, it was better to make the break now uh, than to look in the development of of the Republican Party and the upsurge of the Northwest uh, for another four years and begin the struggle under uh, under more unfavorable conditions. The slaveholders' party therefore played a vapanik, a vapanik. When the Democratic, uh, when the Democrats of the North uh, declined to go playing, uh, to go playing the part of, of the poor whites, the South and South uh, secured Lincoln's victory by splitting the vote, and then uh, took its victory as a pretext of drawing the sword from the scatbard. The whole movement uh, was was and is based on one C's on the slave question. Not in the sense of rather the slaves within the existing slave state should uh, be emancipated outright or not, but rather 20 million free men of the North should submit any longer to an oligarchy of 300,000 slaveholders. Rather, the vast territories of the Republic should be, should be um, um, nurseries uh, for the free states or for slavery. Finally, rather the national policy of the Union should take an armed uh, spreading of slavery in Mexico, Central and South America at its device. End quote. Karl Marx, The North American Civil War. The American Civil War was indeed a revolution. Here Karl Marx consider it as, as, consider it as so due to the 
for the mass support it got from the proletariat and the slave of America on the side of the Union to fight against the Confederacy. Because of this, red brigades and slave regiments were made in voluntary formation in the side of the Union, self-organized and democratically ran by the workers and thralls themselves. The idea of the American Civil War was not about slavery is false. Not only did the Confederacy adopt the South Carolina Declaration of Independence, which declared independent on the question of slavery, same with Mississippi as well, but also the major workers and former slaves that volunteered in the Union Army joined to see the abolition of slavery completely. Over 500,000 slaves enlisted from 1861 to, uh, to 63 each year, even before the Emancipation Proclamation. To the majority of the proletariat and enslaved in America and around the world as well, it was a revolution against the slave laws under capitalism, and thus indirectly fighting against capitalism itself. There, the proletariat and enslaved had risen up against the capitalist system with a slave law and remain of the United States of America. They took up arms when radicals that understood their interests ended up winning the bureaucratic election of the, Uni of the United States, and thus acted on what the proletariat and enslaved wanted. They... They many, their many former slaves ended up joining the Union Army way before Emancipation Proclamation was even declared, and there, uh, and there was the proletarian and slave militias led by communist radicals through democratic elections to make them leader in the first place. As also stated by Marx, quote, If the border states of the disputed areas in which the two systems have hitherto contended for domination are a thorn in the flesh of the South, there can be, on the other hand, be no mistake that in the course of war up to now, they have constituted the chief weakness of the North. One section of the slaveholders in these districts sim uh, simulated loyalty to the North and by and bidding of the, con of the conspirators in the South, another section found that, in fact, it was in accordance to the real interests of the traditional ideas to, uh, to go with the Union. Both sections have equally crippled the North, anxiety to keep the loyal slaveholders of the border states in good humor, fear of throwing them into the arms of secession in a word, tender regard of the interests, prejudice, prejudices and susceptibilities of the um, of the of these ambiguous allies had submitted the Union government with in incurable weaknesses since the beginning of the war. Driven uh, it, it, the half measures forced it to assemble away the principle of the war and, and to spare the foe's most v vulnerable spot, the root of the evil slate of the root of the evil slavery itself. When only recently Lincoln presum uh, presumptuously revoked Fremont, Missouri's proclamation on the emancipation of Negroes uh, belonging, to the, belonging to the rebels, this was done solely out of regard for the loud protest of the loyal slaveholders in Kentucky. However, a turning point has already been reached. With Kentucky, the last border state, has been pushed into the series of battlefields between, between South and North. With the real war for the border states and the border states themselves, the question of winning or losing them is withdrawn from the sphere of diplomatic and, parliament and, and parliamentary discussions. One section of slaveholders will throw off the mask of loyalty, the other will, will content itself with the prospect of a financial compensation such as Great Britain gave uh, the West Indian planters. Events themselves drive the... Uh, uh, proclama proclamation of the decisive slogan emancipation of the slaves end quote Karl Marx the civil war in the United States what Karl Marx is saying here that it, what Karl Marx is saying here is that even though the civil war wasn't about slavery on the side of the union initially to the people fighting into the war it was about slavery for uh, for slavery to on the question of whether or not slavery should be abolished or not Rather or not, if tyranny as a class struggle should remain itself or not. Rather or not, if capitalism with a slave law and remain should remain within the United States of America or not. Thus, it doesn't matter if the Emancipation Proclamation was even declared or not. What mattered was the actual self-action of the working class and enslaved that they themselves are to declare themselves free and were able to even pressure the American bourgeois state to make the uh, Emancipation Proclamation in the first place. The workers and the enslaved themselves were able to say were able to basically put pressure and put action uh, against the bourgeois state uh, in order for the bourgeois state to act in their interests first and foremost. And if they were not, then they would carry out their own actions as well 
against the unions, completely destroying it. As Karl Marx stated, talking about actually capitalism with the slave law and remain within the United States, quote, the slavery question is being solved in practice in the border uh, slave states. Even now, especially in Missouri and the lesser extent in Kentucky, etc., a large scale dis uh, disciple of slaves is taking place. For instance, 5,000 slaves. Uh, 50,000 slaves have disappeared from Missouri. Some of them have ran, have ran away. Others have been transported by the slave owners to more distant southern uh, states. It is rather strange that the most important and significant event is not mentioned in any English newspaper. On November 18th, delegates from four, from four five uh, North Carolina from the four from the 45 uh, congressional district of North Carolina uh, counties met on the uh, Harris Island appointed by a provisional government revoked the ordinance of secession and proclaimed that North Carolina was returning to the Union. The counties of North Carolina represented at this convention have been called together to elect the representatives to Congress at Washington. End quote. Karl Marx, The Crisis of the Slavery Issue. The fight itself was very much supported by the proletariat and the slave, where they themselves were carrying out this revolutionary initiative and gave, uh, and gave way to a high effort for the capitalist system to be abolished through the movement of the abolition of slavery. However, it wasn't, it wasn't perfect. It did end up uh, having a counter-revolution. Where many, form, where many forms of discrimination laws were passed to harden uh, the struggles of black people in the United States of America, where even Frederick Douglass, an abolitionist who had unconditionally supported the Union in the Civil War and urged many black people to join the Union armies, was disgusted by the laws passed, and he was genuinely angered uh, that, the heart, that the heart of the revolution, that being the proletariat and enslaved, were being ignored by the bureaucracy of the United States after the Civil War. As stated best by Farrah Douglas, quote, In the matter of respect for, uh, for dignitaries, it should never be forgotten, however, that the duties are reciprocal, and, the, and while the people should uh, f uh, frown down the very manifestation of levity and contend for those in power, it is the duty of the processors of power, so of the use of the deserve, to ensure the respect of uh, reverence. To come a little nearer to the case now before us, the Supreme Court of the United States, in an exercise uh, in, of its high and vast constitutional power, has suddenly, unexpectedly decided that the law intended to secure uh, to colored people the civil rights guaranteed to them by the following pro uh, provision of the Constitution of the, United States of, Amer of the United States is unconstitutional and void. Here it is, quote, No state, says the 14th Amendment, shall make or enforce any law... Uh, which shall abridge the privileges and immunities of the citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny any, nor, nor deny any person within the jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Now, when a bill has been discussed for weeks and months and even years in the press of the platform, in Congress and out of Congress, when it has been calmly debated and clear as heads, when the most skillful and learned lawyers of the, in, in the land, when every argument against it has been over and over again carefully considered and fairly answered, when its, con when its constitutionality uh, has been especially discussed pro and con, when it has passed the United States House of Representatives and it has been solemnly enacted by the United States Senate, perhaps the most imposing legislative body in the world, when such a bill has been submitted the cat to the cabinet of the nation composed of the eight of the able of the ablest men um, in the in the land uh, when it when it has passed uh, under the uh, scrutinizing eye of the attorney general of the United States when the executive and na uh, and of the nation has been has given to it uh, is name and former approval when it is taken its place upon the statute book and remained there for ne for nearly a decade and the country has largely intended to it. You will agree with me that the reasons for declaring such a law uh, unconstitutional and void should be strong, irresistible, and absolutely conclusive. End quote. Frederick Douglass, The Civil Rights Case. As well, Frederick Douglass uh, straight up calling for the abolition of the police and replaced by a proletarian militia because the constitutional function of the police as stated by the Supreme Court was made to apprehend slaves and protect prior property from squatters and protect capital accumulation. 
quote, I am not here in this presence to discuss the constitutionality and unconstitutionality of the decision of the Supreme Court. The decision may or may not be constitutional. That is a question for lawyers, not for not for laymen. And there are lawyers on this platform that has learned and able and, al and eloquent uh, as any who have appeared in this case before the Supreme Court or as or as any in the land. To these, I leave the exposition of the Constitution that I, uh, that I claim the right to remark upon a strange and gallering inconsistency with the former decisions and action of the current uh, of the count of the court of, on this uh, civil rights bill. It is a new departure entirely out of the line of the, prece of the precedents and decisions of the Supreme Court at other times in other directions where, are the, where, where the rights of colored men are, were, con were concerned. It has utterly ignored and rejected the force and application of, obje of object and intention as a rule of interpretation. It was con instructed the Constitution in, def in a defiant dis uh, disregard of what the object and intention of the adoption of the 14th Amendment. It has made no account whatever. Uh, whatever of the intention and purpose of Congress and the President in putting the Civil Rights Bill upon the statue in the Book of the Nation. It has been fit in this case, affecting a weak and much persecuted people to be guided by the narrowest and most restricted rules of legal interpretation. It was viewed both by the Constitution and the law with the strict regard uh, to their letter, but without any generous recognition of their broad and liberal spirit. Upon the narrow principles and decision is logical and legal, of course. But what I complain of, uh, and what every lover of liberty in the United States has the right to complain of, is the sudden uh, and, cause and causeless reversal of all the great rules of legal interpretation by which this court was governed in other days, and the construction of the Constitution and the, of laws respecting colored people. In these dark days of slavery, this court on all occasions have the greatest importance to intention as a guide and interpretation, the object and intention of the law it was said must prevail. Everything in favor of slavery and against the Negro was settled by this ob object and intention. Um, the, the Constitution was constructed according to the intention. We were over and over again referred to the framers meant and plain language as sacrifice so our firm attention of these farmer of these framers might be positively asserted. When we said in behalf of the Negro that the Constitution of the United States has been intended to establish justice and to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves as our as our uh, posture, we were told uh, that the words said so, but uh, that was obviously not its intention. That it is intended to apply only white people and that the intention must govern. End quote. Frederick Douglass, The Civil Rights Case. After the end of the Civil War, their history continues, especially with their movement paving the way for the Civil Rights Movement and many women's suffrage movements to come once up. Uh, uh, once the 1900s would appear, these movements wouldn't have gained success if it was if it what if it without those who actively fought against slavery. People like Harriet Tubman, who actively helped runaway slaves to freedom, Susan B. Anthony, who was an active speaker of the abolitionist movement, as well as a women's rights activist, John Brown, who was a martyr that took bore that took uh, bore arms and took an active organized struggle against slavery and philosopher Frederick Douglass who was a prominent who was a prominent spokesleader of the abolitionist movement these people would then influence the ongoing fight against racism in the United States and uh, there was and there was still a huge amount of racism still around the United States after the Civil War and even goes on today the earliest form of constant racism in the United States uh, that was still around the United States of America was the curfew laws introduced during the Re Reconstruction when cops would occupy ghettos where black people uh, lived and and force them to stay, to stay in their homes uh, when time would hit 8 o'clock at night. Uh, if they didn't obey, then they would be beaten down by the, pop, by the police to the point of death. This practice continued as all continue all the way until 1949 in most states but in states like texas oklahoma and even arkansas they were abolished when uh when they were no no longer federally required to be in law in southern states under ruther under ruther ford b ford 
when it when it was introduced by Andrew Johnson and then enforced more under Louis's S. Grant, they were federally instated, uh, which created a domination of the labor market where white people would be able to get higher paying jobs for fewer hours than black people in the South, which affects many black folk to this day uh, in the state of Alabama and state of Mississippi. The most consistent, however, and most terrible laws passed in the United States of America are the ones that have, uh, have had the most effects to this day all over the country. These laws were even passed and structured by a representative in the House of Representatives of the United States. This representative was Jim Crow, and he was also a legal legislator, a part of the United States of America, that specifically made laws to have black people be segregated, have less rights of living, not have the rights to basic usage of public utilities, as well for business to buy pr property in green colored neighborhoods where they could only buy property in red colored neighborhoods all all of this occurred all over the United States of America and these laws would be known as the Jim Crow laws where neighborhoods school and work segregation was com commonplace and even worse laws and legislation addressing local voting laws would require people to carry voter voter identification cards where they would identify the race of someone and determine their, cons uh, their consideration uh, of their vote and if they were a black person voting, they would either be disqualified to vote over faulty, faulty accusations of voter fraud or would be attacked by racist, not, by racist mobs. As we have said, however, these laws are still in, pl in, in place. In fact, it is stated by UCLA and, and, and NCAA that segregation in both neighborhoods and schools are the highest it's ever been despite there being no law actually making it to occur. Rather, the segregation is happening to the economic coercion that is prominent in black people having a proletarian demographic, where due to the due to these segregation laws, uh, it was uh, it was able to allow more gener uh, generational wealth build up um, over over time for white families to build up neighborhoods for white people to live more comfortably. Meanwhile, black people would uh, would be forced to not would be forced not to not to uh, buy valuable property to build up wealth for generations, leading to bad infrastructure and more poverty in these neighborhoods where black people lived. And these neighborhoods would then be later known as ghettos. This entire event and concept was called redlining, and it was put in place by Jim Crow when the United States passed the Jim Crow laws. Despite that being gone, the effects of not being able to have as much generational wealth as white people still gave black people less economic mobility and financial benefits compared to white people due to the practice uh, which occurred 40 years straight. Thus, allowing white people in the United States today to have more of an advantage of financial success and quality of living conditions compared to black people in the United States of America. This was fought against in America during the American Revolution of, 18, of 1968, i.e. the Civil Rights Movement, during the revolutions of 1968, where many thinkers across the United States would be, list, would be listened to, uh, to, mi to mildly for the first time uh, and the working class would take up arms and action against the bourgeois state's laws, as well some organizations straight up trying to have a revolution against capitalism as a whole. It, it was a very spontaneous movement that a vanguard party was trying to be built in this movement from the Black Panther Party. But that ended up uh, being con in a constant period of standstill and eventual split between the Marxist faction, Maoist faction, anarchist faction, and liberal faction in the Black Panther Party that all united under the idea of pan-African liberation and establishment of a new African republic. This didn't make up the majority of the movement in the American, in the American Revolution of 1968, but the Marxist faction of the Black Panther Party, led by Huey P. Newton and Fred Hampton, were the most correct on this factor, about the need for a new African republic as a national liberation movement that would go along then in, with the international revolution of the working class against the owning class. Quote, but first, they must respect the party which is transmitting this message. When the vanguard group destroys the machinery of the oppressor by dealing with him in small groups of three and four, and then escapes the might of the oppressor, the masses will be overjoyed and will adhere to the correct strategy. When the masses hear that the Gestapo policeman has been executed while uh, sipping coffee as a count 
at, at a at a counter and the revolutionary executioners fled without being traced the masses will see the validity of this type of approach to resistance it is not necessary to organize 30 million black people in primary groups of twos and threes but it is important for the party to show the people how to go about how to go about revolution during slavery in which no vanguard party existed and forms of communication were severely restricted and sufficient many slave revolts occurred there are basically three ways we can, one can learn uh, through study, through observation, and through actual experience. The black community is basically uh, composed of activists. The community learns through activity, either through observation of, uh, of or participation in the activity. To study and learn is good, but the actual experience is the best means of learning. The party must engage in activities that will teach the people. The black community is basically not a reading community. Therefore, it is very significant that the Vanguard group first be activists. Without this knowledge of the black community, one could not gain the fundamental knowledge of the black revolution in racist America. The main function of the party is to awaken the people and to teach them the strategic method of resisting the power structure which is prepared not only to combat the resistance of the people with the massive brutality but to totally annihilate the black community and the black population. And quote Huey P. Newton, the correct handling of a revolution. But these ideas for national liberation of black people to establish their own nation didn't come exclusively from theorists of the Black Panther Party, like the two I had just mentioned, or others like Lorenzo Camboa Irvin or Angelia Davis. The ideas for national liberation of black people to have their own nation is stated to come all the way back to Malcolm X, who proclaimed the idea of a new African republic to rebel against racist America and for black people to, to liberate themselves from white supremacy if they are to truly be free. While it may be true that Malcolm X did give light into the into uh, those ideas, and he did have major influence on the most radical section of the civil rights movement, but even Malcolm X said this idea um, for national liberation of black people actually came from the thesis of the black uh, on the black question by the Communist International, which was written as a resolution on the national question for black people in the United States on whether or not they should have their own national liberation movement and should be supported by the Communist International back in the Fourth World Congress of the Communist International, all the way back in 1922. This proposal was introduced and proposed by C.L.R. James, um, by C.L.R. James, who was a radical member a, a regular mem member of the American section of the Communist International and was supported by many people along with C.L.R. James, including Vladimir Lenin, Leon Trotsky, Karl Radek, Christian Rykovsky, Evgeny Brezovetsky, and Ivar Smilga. All of them were white Russians seeing the question for black people to have the right to self-determination of their own nation as the same struggle for supporting the struggle for national liberation movements made up of workers by uh, made up by workers in general in places like Armenia and Caucasia. Quote. Two, the history of the American blacks has prepared them to play a major role in the liberation of the struggle of the entire African race. 300 years ago, the American blacks were torn from the native African soil, transported to America in slave ships, and in at indescribably cruel and indescribably cruel conditions sold into slavery. For 250 years, they were treated like human cattle under the whip of the American overseer. Their labor cleared uh, from the forest built of the roads uh, picked from cotton, picked the cotton and constructed the railroads on the southern aristoc where on it the southern aristocracy rested. The reward for their labor was poverty, illiteracy, and degradation. The blacks were not were not docile slaves. Their history is full of revolts, uprising, and underground struggle for freedom. But all their efforts to free themselves were savagely suppressed. They were tortured into submission, while the bourgeois press and, re and religion justified their, uh, their slavery. When slavery became an obstacle preventing the full and unhindered development of America towards capitalism, when this slavery came into conflict with the slavery of wage labor, it had to give way. The Civil War, which was not a war uh, for the emancipation of the blacks, but a war for the preservation of the industrial hegemony of the North, 
con confronted the black confronted the blacks with the choice between forced labor in the south and wage slavery in the north. The bloods and sweat and tears of the emancipated blacks helped build the helped build American capitalism. Uh, and when the country and the, when the country now become a world power. Um, a inevitably pulled into the world war. Black Americans gain equal rights with uh, with the whites to kill and to die for dem for quote unquote democracy. Four hundred thousand colored uh, proletarians were recruited on the American army and organized into special black regiments. These black soldiers and had hardly returned from the blood from the bloodbath of the war before they came up against r uh, racial persecution, lynchings, murders, and the denial of rights discrimination and general uh, contempt they fought back but paid dearly for the attempt to assert their human rights the prosecutions of blacks became even more widespread than before the war and and blacks once again learned uh, to know to quote unquote know their place the spirit of revolt inflamed the post-war and violence persecuted uh, was suppressed in the case of inhumane cruelty in the events in Tulsa city in Oklahoma uh, seen in the uh, in the program of 1921 which turned a vert which turned into a vertible race war still caused a flare-up again this plus the post-war the post-war in in industrialization of blacks in the north placed the american blacks particularly those in the north in the vanguard of the struggle for black liberation three the communist international is extremely proud to see the exploited black workers resisting the attacks of the ex of the exploiters since the enemy of the black race and the enemy of the, of the white of the white workers is one in the same capitalism and imperialism the international struggle of black of the black race is a struggle against the common enemy an international black movement based on this struggle must be organized in america the center the center um of black culture and black uh, protests in africa with the reserve of human labor for the further development of capitalism in central america in central america costa rica guatemala colombia nicaragua and other independent republics where american capitalism rules in puerto rico haiti santo and san domingo and other caribbean islands where brutal treatment of our black brethren by the american occupation has provoked a worldwide protest from uh, conscious blacks and revolution white workers in South Africa and the Congo, where growing industrialization of, of the black population has led to all kinds of uprisings and in the and in East Asia and East Africa, where the inroads of world capital have led to the local population starting active anti imperialist movement. Four the Communist International must show the black people that they are not the only ones to suffer capitalist and imperialist oppression, that the workers and peasants of Europe, Asia, and America are also victims of imperialism, that the black struggle against imperialism is not the struggle of any one single people, but of all peoples of the world, that in India and in China, in Persia and Turkey, in Egypt and Morocco, the oppressed non-white peoples of the colonies are heroically fighting their imperialist exploiters, that these people are rising against the same evils, i.e. against the racial oppression, inequality, and exploitation, and are fighting for the same ends, political, economic, and social emancipation and equality. The Communist International represents the revolutionary workers and peasants of the entire world in their struggle against the power of imperialism. It is not just an organization of the enslaved white workers of Europe and America, but as much as the organization of the oppressed non-white people peoples of the world. And so fe and also feels the duty bound and encouraged to support the international organizations of the black people in their struggle against the common enemy. End quote. The Communist International. The Black Question. And I say this quote from the Communist International and many other ideas proposed by Malcolm X, but also the ideas that are proposed and uh, theorized by Vladimir Lenin and Leon Trotsky, and especially C.L.R. James and George Padmore, were indeed correct. Capitalism itself seeks to dominate over other nations and grow the proletariat as large as it can. However, by doing this, this doesn't entail that just a nation doing the, uh, this to another nation, rather a class of people doing it to uh, doing it another class doing it to another class of people that spans the people in general regard in general regardless of national affiliation this goes for classes that are employed thus there isn't even an oppressed national people rather that mo but rather that 
mostly under a oppressed international people from another international people with different social relations to the means of production. International action has always been the, has always changed the world, and in of itself is how the world operates and has. Communists thus be mu- communists thus must be internationalists. So then, how do we put that internationalism in action? Well, the national borders and the nations still exist under the rule of capitalists and national people, thereby losing their own importance of nationality and becoming proletarians, like the rest of the proletariat. Therefore, that means the proletariat spans the world, and thus means that the oppression is all over the world and affects everyone. Thus, when workers then organize in a national liberation movement to fight against the oppression and domination of a capitalist state through its imperialism and calls for a national liberation of the given area, that actually speaks to the overall class struggle for these people who were integrated into the proletariat to serve the interests of the bourgeoisie against their, against their interests and see the same thing as happening to other in the oppressor's nation. Thus, then they get... Thus, they get fed up and revolt, and it speaks to other workers to where they revolt as well in the same movement to stand in solidarity with other workers against the domination of the bourgeoisie that they know from experiencing it from experiencing it themselves at home. However, to get back to the revolution of 1968, due to the spontaneity of that revolution, it did not grow. Um, it did not grow what it could have been, and was quickly moderated by moderates that ended up uh, t- that ended up ending things when Lyndon B. Johnson finally signed the Civil Rights Act and ended things there. The proletariat got demotivated and ca- and and ceased organizing, even in a revolutionary situation when basic reforms were introduced and Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. That's the thing about spontaneous movements and how the and how these alone will fail to achieve the true liberation of everyone from the current oppression that we face today. There is a spontaneous action of workers due to how common they are with the common social relations of the means of production that can be able to understand uh, each other's interests organically in the limits of capitalism so they can have better rights, higher pay, or even just straight up action against capitalism and the bourgeois state entirely. This is done so by the proletariat themselves and and shows uh, how how well they can carry their own actions. We need to we need to be able to relate the, to the proletariat in their interests at hand with the realities that that face them when they are in times of struggle and revolutionary situations against the bourgeois state and capitalism. Because at that point they look uh, for an alternative. Because without political influence from a good class conscious workers organization, the workers' spontaneous actions will not have the abilities to face against the bourgeoisie that is needed. Because of the reality is that the spontaneous struggles alone and spontaneity alone will not uh, will not be able to have an effective revolution due to the fact that there is a lack of consciousness to even suggest what the movement is even fighting for in the first place. They can easily be usurped into ideas that are against the proletariat, and technically speaking, there is less planned action against the forces that seek to destroy them. Thus, they end up being destroyed. This is why spontaneous struggle alone won't help, and this is why we need a vanguard party. We need to be able to relate to the proletariat in their interests at hand with the realities that face them when they are in times of struggle and revolutionary situations against the bourgeois state and capitalism. Because at that point, they look into an alternative. Because without political influence from a good class conscious workers organization, the workers' spontaneous actions will not have the abilities to face against the bourgeoisie that is needed. Strikes can create a revolutionary situation for us as communists and the vanguard party to spread class and political consciousness. Through the Theory and be able to have these workers join the Vanguard Party, so that way these strikes can uh, can be uh, cannot be obsolete, and the proletariat are more keen to take state power. Um, there can be uh, plan it can be planned. Uh, there can be it can be there that can be planned within the Vanguard Party through discussion and voting on policy in the party from the proletariat themselves to the leadership, which is elected on the mass majority of workers and the leadership being the working class and the communists being the class and politically conscious workers. This can be done through Soviets centralized in a Vanguard Party. A Soviet is a council made up of workers and peasants that debate, discuss, and democratically vote on policies to be passed with representatives they elect to ensure them that the, that the policies of the workers that elect rep- uh, representatives are, are, are passed. 
with recallable elections in order to ensure things go well for the population based off the population's own power and stop representatives from not doing their job correctly that the workers and peasants can easily replace. This is an amazing form of governing and a political organizing system for the worker state, as well as a great way to manage democratic centralism in the vanguard. However, Soviets by themselves, without without a reason or without really principled uh, form, are going to, are, are are going to just by themselves uh, where they organize, but not really mo- motivated. And the Soviets then become defunct without much reason to have the Soviets in the in there in the first place. This is why the relationship between the Soviet and the party is needed. This can be worked through the proletariat themselves. In fact, it has to be. The proletariat goes through the struggle all the time, and thus there needs to be an effort for workers to be able to elect policy and elect leaders to enhance the struggle and organize politically against the system, based on their own power once they join the organization and fight against the capitalist system. This has to then this this has to then be done from Soviets where workers join councils to do to do just that. But these Soviets must be a part of a political organization, an international one, that thus can learn and be able to understand theory to become class of politically conscious for the understanding cap for understanding capitalism, what it does, and why we need a revolution against it. This can cre- this this then creates the vanguard. And this uh, is the entire point of the Vanguard Party. The reason why is because without centralization of the proletariat, the spontaneity of the proletariat will fade away due to the demotivation and lack of well-planned dis- discussion on the movement on what it is about because of this spontaneity. Thus, spontaneity is important because without it, we will not know where to go and where the proletariat is. But that alone will not be able to allow revolution. The best action for revolution is for the proletariat to be able to centralize with their democratic organs of discussion within a party. Because despite the Civil Rights Act being passed and and the effect of Jim Crow laws is still affecting many black people, black people, black working class people um, in the United States to this day. As as we have said, however, these laws are still in place. Uh, In fact, in fact, it is stated by UCLA and NCAA that segregation, both in neighborhoods and schools, are the highest it's ever been, despite being no law actually making uh, making it to occur. Rather, this, this segregation is happening through the economic coercion that is prominent in black people having the, a proletarian demographic. Where due to, the, due to these segregation laws, it was able to allow a more generational wealth to build up over time for white families to build up neighborhoods uh, for white people to live more comfortably. Meanwhile, black people would, uh, would be forced to not have to buy valuable property uh, to build up uh, wealth for generations, leading a bad infrastructure and more poverty in these neighborhoods where black people lived. This entire event and the concept was called redlining, and it was put into uh, into place by Jim Crow, when the United States passed Jim Crow laws, uh, despite being despite being gone. The effect, despite being gone, the effects of not being able to have as much interracial wealth as white people still uh, gave black people less economic ability and financial benefits compared to white people due to its practice, which occurred for 40 years straight, and it still affects many black people in the United States today. Hi guys, uh, this is part one of the video. Um, the this video is getting too long, so I decided to basically make a two. So basically, made decided to make it a series. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, then hit the uh, like button down below. I'd very much appreciate it. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button. I'd also very much appreciate it. And yeah, um, thank you for watching this video. Uh, check out my other videos and stay tuned uh, for part two. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys uh, very much, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy uh, enjoy this video. Thank you. Bye.